Hey there, friends. Jeff Fritz here, and I'm back with another episode of C Sharp in the Cards. And this time, we're going to talk about something called arrays. Now, arrays are the simplest way for you to, to collect data, to pull together and have a, a collection of various data points that you might want to work with. All right. Now, if we go back to our example of playing cards, well, a deck of cards, a hand of cards, is an array. It's a collection of, of data points, and I can have several of them, and that's an array of data. Okay, it's a collection of cards. You might represent cards as a string or a number or more complex types like we're, we're going to see later. But we're going to learn a little bit about arrays today. Now, when you define an array, you can define it here in C Sharp like this with some sort of a type and then square brackets is how you declare it along with the name of the variable and then you specify the size of the array by saying that size inside of another pair of square brackets next to that type. So string square brackets deck of cards is a new string square brackets 52 and that allocates 52 spots in an array of type string. So 52 strings all together you can refer to as just deck of cards. Now, you, you can't add to that. You can't add and make 53, 54, 55 entries in the deck of cards. It doesn't work like that. An array is a fixed size. Similarly, you can't step it down. You can't take cards off of it and suddenly 51, 50, 49. It doesn't work like that. You're always going to have 52 entries. Same thing here if we want to allocate five card hands for for me and for you to play a little game of poker, shall we? So we can then initialize those by placing the values inside of curly braces when we define that array. So we can say my hand is a new string of size five and then curly braces, I've got a two of hearts, a three of diamonds, a four of spades, a five of clubs and a six of hearts. Not bad, but you can also use what's now called a collection expression, like we're seeing here in your hand. So string square brackets your hand. So we're declaring an array of strings for your hand, and I can initialize with values just inside a pair of square brackets. No other markup needed. So I can place those values there, and I'll give you a two of spades, a three of spades, a four of spades, a five of spades, and a six of spades. Somebody's got a straight flush here. It's going to be hard to beat. And I can execute that by just running control enter here, and I'll see that my hand, and there's my collection of cards, and there's your hand. Now, of course, we just assign these randomly so we can't actually both have a four of spades in our in our hands here right so it's not real now we can reference various elements from inside that array by using the variable and pass in a zero based index to that so i can specify here display my hand item one now that's not going to return the first item, the two of hearts, but it's a zero based index. The first item is actually going to be index zero. So if I said my hand zero, I'd get the two of hearts. But specifying my hand one gives me the three of diamonds. All right. So remember that arrays are zero index based. All right. Now we can also swap values and assign values into that array by just using an equal sign and specifying that index entry. So here, I could say my hand one, let's, let's try dropping that three of diamonds and let's put an ace of spades into my hand. So my hand one is now the ace of spades will display my hand. Well, now I have two of hearts, ace of spades, four of spades, five of clubs, and six of hearts. I don't have the straight anymore. So it's a fixed number of entries we can swap values out by just referencing that entry by index. All right. Now, if you try to reference indexes that don't exist, well, you're going to get an index out of range error 
because my hand doesn't have 20 entries. I've only got five. So if I try to request the 20th entry, it's, it's going to throw an ugly error here for me. Don't want to do that. So you can perform a little safety check. You can check the length of an array using the length property. So if we run that here, you'll see my hand dot length returns a five. Pretty easy to follow along there. So that's just single dimensional arrays, right? It's just a collection in one dimension. We can also have multi-dimensional arrays where maybe you want to have two dimensions to an array. You want to have a real matrix of data. So you can declare multi-dimensional arrays by separating the dimensions by commas here. So int square bracket comma square bracket says this is a two-dimensional array. It's going to be of type int. It's going to be three by four, right? We're going to have maybe three rows and four columns. So I can then initialize if I want using curly braces like this, and I can say new int, and then here I've got a brace with another curly brace inside of it that specifies the first row, right? The second dimension is four. So I've got three collections of four entries, and that's initializing my matrix, all right? Now, if I want to access elements in that two-dimensional array, I can reference them like here by passing in the two coordinates, row one, column two. So zero, one, zero, one, two, it's going to return seven. All right, let's continue here. So multi-dimensional arrays, we know a little bit about how to work with indexing and referencing contents of our array, well, let's access those values using a for loop. We learned about for loops in our last episode. Let's take a look here, and we can actually build a deck of cards by taking that array, that collection of suits, the four suits, spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs, and the 13 ranks, ace through king, and I can put them together inside the deck of cards with just a little for loop. For i equals zero, i less than the length of the cards array. Now it's initialized with 52 entries. That means that there's 52 spots. They're not necessarily populated yet. Well, we're gonna populate them by taking one of the 13 ranks and one of the four suits. And it's gonna choose those based on the value going through the count from zero to 52. So it's going to mod 13 and count through those, and it's going to mod 4 and count through those. All right. So eventually we'll get all 52 cards. And if we display that, there's our four suits, there's our 13 ranks, and you can see there it's building out the deck of cards. And they're not in your typical... Uh, pre-packaged order when you first crack open a deck of cards, but they're pretty close. Pretty close. All right. Now, I'll continue here, but what if we want to actually shuffle the deck of cards? Let's do this using a common algorithm called the Fisher-Yates shuffle algorithm. Now, this is sometimes called the Nooth shuffle. To do this, we're going to use the random number generator in .NET, okay? We can randomly generate a number up to a certain value by just passing in that value to a next argument when we create a new random object. So we'll say var random equals new random, and then we'll display that value randomly between 1 and 52, and there we get 16. I can run this several times, and I'll get new values each time. Cool. All right. So now that we know how to choose random numbers, we can apply the Fisher Yates algorithm. So I'll initialize the deck of cards like you see here. We'll shuffle the deck using that algorithm. And this algorithm is pretty easy to follow. So I'll use my random number generator. I'll look at the full deck of cards. And I'm going to choose a random number somewhere else in the deck of cards. I'm going to 
find that card at that position, swap it with whatever position we're counting up through the deck, and, that, and that'll be the result. And just loop through, and for each card in the deck, we're going to randomly choose some other card in the deck and swap positions. Pretty easy to follow, and it will shuffle very, very quickly. So, queen of, queen of hearts, six of hearts, nine of hearts, I'll shuffle again. Three of spades, ten of hearts, king of hearts, and so on and so forth. Play with that a little bit. See what you think about that algorithm. But maybe you don't think that shuffling once is good enough. Maybe, maybe we need to shuffle a few more times. How would you shuffle that deck of cards five times? Shuffle it, and then use that state of the deck to shuffle again. And shuffle it five total times. What would your code look like in order to do five shuffles and, and hopefully have a very scrambled, random deck of cards? Give that a try and let me know what you find out. Drop me a message in the comments below about what you would do to solve that problem. Now, after we're done shuffling cards, you and I should each get a hand of cards. Let's, let's deal five cards to each of us, see how we do in a, in a game of poker here. So I'll initialize the deck of cards again. I'll shuffle it using the Fisher-Yates algorithm. There we go. And now we'll deal five cards to you and I. So my hand I equals cards I times two. So we're going to take two cards each time through. And your hand is uh, going to be somewhere in the deck. Where we're going to take the next card out and hand it over to you and then clear that out from the deck. And then display the two hands of cards. All right. Let's see how I do here. So my hand, I got a two of diamonds, ace of spades, jack of clubs. I've got an eight of spades and a nine of diamonds. You got a pair of fours, a jack, a five, and an ace. I think you won this hand. I think you won this hand. I'll, I'll spin again here. Um, I got two fives, a three, four, and a ten. Um, I think I won this hand with my two fives. So there you go. A little way for you to play and generate a couple of poker hands. What if you wanted to generate hands for a game of Texas Hold'em, where we each get two cards, and we're going to deal out five cards into the middle? What would that look like to deal out cards like that? And don't forget, in Texas Hold'em, they, they do what's called burning cards. So we deal two cards to each of us, and then it's going to put the next card to the side, deal three out to the middle, put the fourth card to the side, deal one to the middle, put another card to the side, and then deal a final card to the middle. Who would have the best hands then? Try writing a little bit of dealing there so that it hands out Two hands of two cards and a set of five cards in the middle. That's all we have for this lesson about arrays. It's a pretty powerful feature that you can use in the C-sharp language with .NET. Next time, we're going to dive in further to talk about collections, more complex collections that are available to you as a .NET developer. Do me a favor, click that notification bell just below. Click the subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and make sure you check out all the materials from this lesson at csharpinthecards.com. You can find the links for that just below. Subscribe right there. Check out other lessons in the playlist right there. Thanks so much.